Dallas Cowboys game night is presented by AT&T. Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. 20 to 17, Dallas over Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium. The Cowboys notch win number one of the 2021 campaign, and they improve to an even 500 through two weeks of the NFL season. Welcome in to Cowboys game night here from the Globe Life Studios at the Star in Frisco alongside six-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Bowl champion Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans breaking this one down. It was a fun one from the beginning. It was a, a punch counterpunch sort of game, a gritty win for the Dallas Cowboys, but they do get the job done. And hey, that first one's always the hardest to get out of the way. It is. You know, you call it gritty. I call it mud. Uh, muddy, I, you know, I like when the hogs wallow, man. They played hard. They played tough. You know, I like that goal to go for our offense. We were two down there two times. We scored two times, two touchdowns. They were down there three times, four times, and only scored one, one touchdown. That was the difference at the end in setting up uh, Zerline's 56-yard field goal, man. We had, to, we had the lead. We kept the lead. They had to keep catching us. And at the end, our quarterback had the ball, led them down. Greg Zerline did what he had to do. You knew this win was going to take some elbow Greece says entering the day the the, the storyline was missing Randy Gregory Demarcus Lawrence no Donovan Wilson there were starters that were out Lyle Collins as well Michael Gallup the list goes on and on you were missing these guys but the Cowboys still had role players go in and make a huge impact I mean, a big role player that played everything. Before this game, we heard that Michael Parsons would play uh, defensive end. I'm like, nah, nah, that's just, that's just something they're throwing out there. Coach ain't going to expose that. He'll use it as a surprise. This kid played a lot of defensive end. That made it way Jalen could be on the field more. That made it way uh, Leighton Van Der Esch could be on the field more. We got to look at film. But all of this linebacking crew played well, headed off by Parsons. Yeah, you got to give a lot of credit to the defensive coaching staff for slowing down the run. Just 95 total yards for the Chargers but also the offensive staff. Kellen Moore and company putting Dak Prescott in an opportunity and in a situation to be successful. Here's what QB1 had to say after the first win of 2021. Please walk us through the, the final drive, your, your approach, anything you said to the team, and then also I guess you had some clock issues. It was difficult to see how much time was left there right at the end on that third down. Yeah, I mean, we talked about all week long um, wanting to finish, wanting to finish each drive, wanting to finish the game. Uh, wanted to necessarily take it out of the defense hand. Obviously, going back to last week, we could have finished, and we could have finished in the red zone with the touchdowns, and we could have finished that game last week um, with the touchdown, right? Not settling for a field goal, so we put that on us this week and got the chance to go go out there and do that with um, what was it, three minutes or so or something like that on the clock. And uh, so it was just important just to relay that message, you know what I mean, and bring the guys back up and focus in on that, and we did. And then just that back end, uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure. I'm I'm looking at the end zone clock, so. I saw the time. Uh, I just thought that we're comfortable and we're good in field goal range, and so that's what they wanted. To, they wanted to do, and then obviously we had a conversation after about, you know, the whole clock getting turned off. The TV cameras got like you and Kellen at the very end as the kick was going through. You guys were kind of embracing. Just what was going through your mind uh, during that, you know, three or four seconds? Yeah, as he kicked it. I mean, uh, yeah, I was over there talking to Amari, checking on Amari, somewhat kind of just trying to get my mind off of it, I guess. Uh, obviously, knowing in a situation like that. You trust the, your teams and Greg Zerline to put it through. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was great. Obviously, believing him making, it, he went and did that. Uh, and it was just a relief, right? I mean, the, the first win, first win of many, and the first one's usually the hardest, uh, and it was. What are those feelings like when you come out on that last drive? And how much did you miss that when you're out? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what you do it for, uh, for the ball in your hands, for a chance to go win it. That's why I was talking to the offense, telling them that. Uh, we talked about it all week long, and now – We've got the game in a position that we want it. So uh, it's on us to go capitalize and go finish this game off, and we're able to get it in field goal range and let special teams go out there and do their job. Dak Prescott deflecting the credit to a lot of his weapons around them. We're going to talk more about those weapons in the day that they had later on, including a big day for Tony Pollard. But when we come back on Cowboys game night, it was a big day for Micah Parsons playing as a defensive end. How did the defense look in the 20-17 to win? This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. The Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket from the Texas Lottery is your ticket for a chance to win up to $100,000. Get your Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. Must be 18 or older to purchase a ticket. Play responsibly.
It was a bend don't break mentality for the Cowboys defense against the Los Angeles Chargers in a week two win 20 to 17. It was also the first career win for Micah Parsons. Here's his thoughts after the game. Can you start by talking about how different your role was in preparation from like Thursday on based on what it was Wednesday in practice. Uh, yeah, uh, after Wednesday, obviously learning to play linebacker um, after practice, you know, Coach Q came to me and was like, man, we're going to need you to step up big for us this week, um, you know, and instantly I just said, all right, Coach, like, let's play, you know what I mean? Um, you know, after sitting out a year, I ain't going to deny to put an uh, opportunity to get on the field, so I knew my most snaps could come from me rushing a passer today, and I just took it head on from Thursday to uh, today prepared and prepared to be able to play at a high level. The last time you played that much in? High school. Was it natural of you to come back or did you know was there some rough moments for you? I mean a lot of it was natural. I mean some people had a long day out there. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the best part of making that uh, switch over? Uh, the best part is really just reason why I say they drafted me. I mean I mean I'm just showing different versatility what I can do. I think, you know, after today, we can open the playbook even more. I mean, I think my teammates and Coach Q put an unbelievable amount of faith in me, and it just keeps building my confidence up to realize I could do much more than what I thought I could do. You look forward to moving around throughout the season? Hmm? You look forward to moving around throughout the season? Of course, you know, um, manipulating matchups and uh, taking advantage of the, you know, matchups we got out there, I think that's what makes good football teams great. Can you talk a little bit about the sack of Herbert with Friday the when you pushed him all the way back to the 30 and that play and how it developed? Uh, they they did a post play where the guard pulled. Uh, once I read out a run, I was able to beat the guard and do heavy pursuit. I mean, I was chasing him all day. I really wanted Herbert. And I finally got to him. So, you know, I was I was happy about that. Michael, your simple reaction to getting your first career win? <clears throat> uh, that's because, you know, I think we should have won last week. and. You know, I feel like we supposed to win. You know what I mean? I don't know any team out there that prepares more than, you know, Coach Mike and Coach Q prepares us. And, you know, our expectation is to win. So, um, you know, the first one's good, but it's a long way to go. Mike, are there different? Micah Parsons, a part of a defense that had to find pressure going up against Justin Herbert without guys like Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory on the defensive line. They were able to do so and forced a couple big turnovers. What were your thoughts on that side of the football? You know, I, you know, Diggs, uh, Parsons, uh, Basham. I mean, everybody that you look on this defensive chart here either had a, a bat down for a pass, a, a pressure. I mean, a lot of people say, hey, I like how they played. They played with enthusiasm. They played with hustle. And more importantly, they kept them out of the end zone. They kept them the field goals, and that's a great thing. Yeah, and the two turnovers now extending the takeaway streak to nine straight games with a turnover all alone as the second longest active streak in the NFL for a team forcing a takeaway. Now, one of them was a huge one. DeMonte KZ on the goal line, taking the football away on an interception. One of two picks the defense had this afternoon. They've been getting to the football on a normal basis. What's been the biggest change in that regard? Just ball hawkers. You know, some guys got that knack. And these guys, he coached them, went out and got guys that got the knack to get that ball. And the smart thing about KZ, he stayed into the end zone, gave them a few extra yards. So when they coming out, they won backed up. That's a smart move. Still gave up 400 plus yards. Most of those through the air as Justin Herbert had some success, but only 95 yards on the ground as the run defense looked vastly improved for the Cowboys defense today. So did Tony Pollard. He had a great day over 100 yards on the ground. We'll hear from Tony when we return to Cowboys game night. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. The Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket from the Texas Lottery is your ticket for a chance to win up to $100,000. Get your Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. Must be 18 or older to purchase a ticket. Play responsibly. This segment is brought to you by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Cowboys tailbacks held in check week one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not so much in week two. Tony Pollard with 140 yards from scrimmage. Ezekiel Elliott went for 71 yards and a touchdown. Let's hear from Tony Pollard after his big day in Los Angeles. 
Tony, just, just talk about how exciting that game was, just kind of the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, and you guys getting the win. How excited is it? Uh, it was big. You know, it was big for the team, you know, having a tough game like that, a close one, you know, back and forth, you know, momentum just swinging. You know, it's big for the offense to come out, you know, finish the game with the game-winning field goal and just come out with the dub. Is this the, the biggest that you've – been a part of a game plan in a while, maybe since college, it felt like you, you and Z kind of really were 50-50 on those carries. Yeah, we just, you know, we just wanted to go with who was hot, you know, just, we both feed off each other, so if he was hot, you know, we would have just went that way, but, you know, it just turned out that way for this game, and we got the dub. Yeah, there's there's a lot of talk about, you know, who's playing more, who should get more. You you and Zeke have no controversy at all, or you guys love to have the one-two punch. Yeah, we're good. As long as we're getting W's, you know, winning. It's, everything is fine. Did you, you feel like you guys were able to kind of do, you were kind of going a lot on the outside, had a few inside, you were mixing it up. Kellen did a nice job of kind of getting you guys to do in different spots. Yeah, he did a, a great job, you know, play calling, you know, calling the plays for this week, you know, especially after the game we had last week, you know, with an explosive offense, you know, we were able to display, you know, show that we can move the ball up and down the field. You know, he did a good job of switching it up, but just keeping the same energy. How have you been able to stay patient with knowing you can do more, be, be you know, big part of the offense, but also not not trying to rock the boat in any way and just know that the, the touches will come? Uh, I mean, I've been doing this my whole life. You know, been been the underdog my whole life, been, you know, overlooked. So I'm, I'm used to it. So I'm used to grinding and, you know, working for everything I have. So it's just, it comes natural to me. You have more guys out of this game than I probably can count on one hand with Tank and Gregory and, and uh, Don Wilson and, and Gallup. And you guys were able to come in here and, and get this win. How, just how, how big is it knowing that you guys are going to get your better players coming back too? I mean, it's just big. You know, us coming out, getting this team win with a lot of our, our big-time players, you know, our big-time dogs not on the field. So it's it's big. You know, it just shows the team that, you know, we all can do this. You know, we, we all we have. Are you one of those big-time players, though? You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> one more. Dak, it, it, down the stretch, it was like he was like not in a hurry at all. You, you guys have complete confidence that you're going to get in field goal range, and then Zerline's going to make the kick. Yeah, we practice that all the time. I mean, I couldn't even tell you how much we practice this on a on a weekly basis. You know, it's yeah over and over. So we're kind of used to it. it's second nature once we get out there on the field for game day. Awesome, congratulations. No Lyle Collins and no Michael Gallup on the offensive side of the football today, but the Cowboys didn't skip a beat offensively. You had the one-two punch at tailback. You had the duo at wide receiver and at tight end, for that matter. What impressed you the most about this offense? Uh, the guy we ever talked about here is Terrence Steele. He was nice. He was nice. But I tell you what, man, uh, you asked me before the game who I want, Pollard or Zeke, and I said Zeke. <laughs> wow. Pollard showed out, man. He's showing his value. He's showing why they brought him in here. He's more than just a situational back. I mean, uh, I don't think he can take the pounding over the long haul, but these spurts that he gives this team, he really ignites them. Man, he was so quick, and his ability to catch that edge really opened up the possibilities for that offense. And when there's weapons like that scattered throughout, Kellen Moore sitting there licking his chops, and he was able to do it for over 400 yards of total offense today. When we come back, we hear from the hero, Greg Zerline, who had a 56-yard game winner with more Cowboys game night. This segment was brought to you by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Back here on Cowboys game night following the Cowboys 20 to 17 win over the Los Angeles Chargers which included the 16th game winning drive for Dak Prescott in his Cowboys career and also a game winner a 56 yarder from Greg Zerline reversing his fortune from the first week of the regular season. Here's his thoughts after the game. What about uh, I mean it's like two weeks in a row now these games keep coming down and that's kind of the way the football is take us through the mindset of they're dry, your, your team's driving, and you know you're probably going to get a chance to kick a long one there. Yeah, I mean, that's football. You, you're, I don't think you're ever really out of it. And so uh, when they have the ball, you're just trying to stay warm into the net because you never know what's going to happen. And we got the ball back, and I've been in situations in the past. You're like, okay, you're, you might get a chance here. And so uh, just stay warm into the net and, and wait. You put it in your mind that it doesn't matter what. I mean, you're always going to probably get a field goal, even though – they could go get a touchdown, but you're just thinking, I've got to get ready for a field goal here at all times. Yep, yep. The mindset is always, for me as a kicker, that it's going to be a field goal. You know, I don't ever plan on scoring a touchdown, which ideally that's what happens great. Uh, but, you know, you mentally you're always thinking that it's on you. 
I think your first kick, maybe with the Cowboys uh, last year, was was here, and it was a long one too. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, when you when you're getting these 50 plus ones, just, what, what, what's the mindset? There? What are you what are you thinking? Is it any different than a extra point or a 25 yarder? No, nope, it's always the same. Um, you have the same swing in a PAT as you do on a long one, and so that's the mentality. You just go out there, and really, you try not to think about what distance is it from. You just pick your spot and, and go from there. Is it? Kicking kind of like golf, where you can kind of self-correct there in the middle. I mean, like you had a couple of kicks you wanted back last week, you, you got it back on the track, and now here you are here, you, and it's same thing. Is it is it like that, where you can kind of fix one thing and technique and, and move move forward? I think I don't know. I'm terrible at golf, first of all, so I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to compare it to that. Um, but for as far as kicking wise, uh, it's a, it's more about trusting the process, you know. You don't throw out your swing, like I said last week, just because you missed some kicks. Um, you go into practice, you figure out what you did wrong, and you try and correct that. And so um, I think that's really all it is, is just being confident and trusting the swing. You've been around a lot of football here, and uh, how good of a win is this? Uh, you know, coming back like that, a tough loss last week, bouncing back so many guys out, so much adversity throughout the week. And to come in here in a roller coaster game and get a win like that, how big is it? Yeah, awesome. Anytime you get a win in the NFL, it's fantastic because winning this league is very hard. Uh, and really, I don't think you can look at past weeks or future weeks. It's always just every Sunday anybody can win. And so uh, to get a win is awesome. Uh, it's, it's so dang hard to win. <laughs> Great. Thanks, man. Yep. Appreciate thank- it. Good joy. You love hearing the level-headedness, I think you could say, from Greg Zerline. After a poor week one, he really rebounded this week. You know, uh, I try my best to look at kickers, you know, in a different light as, you know, there's, they're my teammates, they got a job to do like myself. But, you know, he made the kick, and that's all I care about. Make the kick, and a great job, Mr. Greg Zerline. Is yeah, that Zerline, yes, that's his name. I, I know your name now <laughs> because you made a 56-yard Winning field goal. Great job, young man. It was the second longest game winner of Zerline's career. His 11th game winning kick, third with the Cowboys. It gives the Cowboys a 20 to 17 win. And when we come back on Cowboys game night, we tie a bow on it. Look forward to Monday night football in week three. Dallas Cowboys game night was presented by AT&T. Reliant, an NRG company. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. The Cowboys overcome plenty of adversity in a 20-17 win over the Los Angeles Chargers. That adversity being five starters inactive for this one on the West Coast. But they notch a road win in dramatic fashion with a 56-yard Greg Zerline field goal as time expires. Over 400 yards for both teams and the Cowboys also Force a takeaway for the ninth straight game. Wrapping things up here with Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans here for Cowboys Game Night. And as we wrap things up from the star, you look ahead to Monday Night Football and a divisional matchup with the hated Philadelphia Eagles. But you really want to look back at this win and take the lessons that you learned along the way. Oh, yeah, just play a little bit more efficient on defense. You know, you had them held down about 99 yards and penalties, but you let them out of the gate a few times. You get that cleaned up on offense. You just keep being efficient in the red zone and third down efficiency. Because if you look back at if we become a 10, 11, or 12 win team, you look back, you won't even think of this game. But if you're a 9, a 10 win team, you'd be like, wow, I'm glad we won that one because we needed to get in the playoffs. You need it any way you can get it on yeah. the road, whether it's ugly or not, it is a win. And that's exactly what the Cowboys did here in week two. It's the Eagles up next, but that's going to do it for us on Cowboys game night. So long from the start.